Hello, everybody. Uh, I've got a, a quick introduction to projectile motion. Um, I've rewritten all the equations of motion on the right side there that we've talked about. Um, you don't have to rewrite those if you don't want. If you already have them somewhere else, that's fine. But I, I left them there for reference. Uh, so first of all, this is most everything I'm going to do is re should be reviewed from the physics course you had last year. Um, I might show you a couple shortcuts to some things um, that might make a few of your problems easier. And all the problems that I'm going to do right now, by the way, uh, there are many, many, many ways to do them. I'm, I'm going to show you one way that just happens to be, uh, in my opinion, pretty uh, convenient. Okay. So uh, first of all, a, a quick review of what does projectile motion mean? So if I have something flying through the air, um, it's a projectile if and only if the only force acting on it is gravity. Okay, so let's say it's a baseball, the force of gravity acts down on it. While it's in my hand and I'm throwing it, it's not a projectile. When it lands, it's not a projectile. But while it's in the air, and again, assuming we're ignoring air resistance, it's a projectile. So uh, the, the, the idea of projectile motion is there's actually only one force acting on the object, so therefore there's a, a downward acceleration. Now on Earth, that downward acceleration is approximately 9.8. We even give it a special letter we call G, and it's 9.8 meters per second per second, and it is down, okay? Now, notice I didn't put a negative in front of that because that depends on your coordinate system. If you say up is positive, well, then you would have to put a negative in front of the 9.8. But if you say down is positive, then not, G is positive 9.8. So um, the magnitude of it is 9.8, and it's pointed down. Now, if you were on some other planet or somewhere else, like the moon, let's say, well, there G is about 1.6, so it depends on where you're at. But for here, for Earth, we're going to use 9.8. Now, um, because that acceleration is constant, our constant acceleration of um, equations of motion, they're all valid, and we're going to use them. Okay. Now, uh, the other thing that you would have learned about projectile motion last year is that the horizontal motion and the vertical motion are independent of each other. The horizontal velocity of a projectile remains constant. It doesn't change because there's no horizontal acceleration. The vertical velocity of a projectile does change because there is a vertical acceleration. So the motion in the horizontal and the vertical are quite different and they are independent of each other. They don't affect each other. There's only one caveat to that. There is one thing that will be the same in both the horizontal and vertical direction, and that is time. If a projectile is moving to the right for three and a half seconds, it's moving up and down for three and a half seconds, okay? So when you're doing problems, that's the one thing that the, that the two uh, objects share. Now, um, something else when you're doing problem solving in projectile motion, okay, I always suggest that students sketch the path of the projectile and decide what two points along that projectile motion that they're looking at. So for instance, in this, in this situation here, let's say you want to know the highest the projectile goes. Well, then you'd probably want one pos position to be the beginning and one position to be the highest point. And you'd write down your givens for that. So you'll notice in the problems I go through, the next several example problems, that I'm always careful to denote which two places I'm looking at along the path of the projectile. Okay. Um, some other things that you would have hopefully learned last year, um, to give a projectile its maximum range, if it's on a level ground, you would launch it at 45 degrees, okay? Um, also, hopefully, you learned that, let's say you launch one projectile at 60 degrees, okay? So let's say that's 60 degrees launch. If you launch a second projectile at 30 degrees at the same uh velocity or same speed, I'm sorry, um, they'll land in the same spot. So those two angles are complementary. So uh, on level ground, two projectiles shot at complementary angles will land the same place. Okay, they'll be in the air for different amounts of time, but they'll land the same place. Now I'll make one more note, What you also hopefully learned in a previous course is that the time the projectiles in the air, it relates to the height. So in this picture here, this projectile would be in the air the longest, this would be the second longest, and this would be the shortest amount of time in the air. It's strictly related to height, if you're on level ground, okay? Now, um, I'm going to do one math example, and this one I'll start off with a relatively easy one. So let's say I've got, a, I'm standing on top of a building, 
and uh, you've got your textbook and you launch your textbook horizontally off the building at, uh, let's say, 40 meters per second. That's a good chuck. That's almost 90 miles an hour. And let's say the building is 100 meters tall. OK, so uh, the two things I want to calculate here. So first of all, it's going to follow a projectile path, which, again, is that something else you would have learned last year. Projectile path is parabolic. OK, it, it follows a parabola. And the two things I want to calculate about the path of the projectile is at the moment of landing. Now, right as it lands, after it lands, it ain't moving anymore. And then it's no longer a projectile because, hello, there's other forces besides gravity acting on it. But right at the moment of impact, I want to know a couple things. I want to know, well, how far did it get? Okay, uh, so delta X. And I also want to know its impact velocity. When it hits the ground here, it's moving down and right. I want to know what those two coordinates are. I want to write that final impact velocity in unit vector notation. Now, there are a lot of ways to do this problem, okay? But I'm going to approach it the following. I'm going to write everything in unit vector notation like we've done before, and I'm going to use these equations to do that. So I'm going to write the position of the, the book as a function of time. And there's going to be an x coordinate or an i hat coordinate, and there's going to be a j hat coordinate. Okay. Now, um, for both of these, I'm going to use equation four to write each of those positions as a function of time. Now, one last thing before I do that, um, well, two last things. We have to have an origin. I'm going to call the base of the building, that's going to be my origin. That's going to be zero comma zero. And um, the two locations I'm studying is the moment of launch, okay, and the moment of impact. Finally, I've got to decide on positive directions. So I'm going to say up and to the right is positive, okay? Um, now again, you don't, you don't have to do that. You can say down is positive if you'd like, um, but I'll go with up is positive. All right, so in the horizontal direction, gravity does not point to the right. So there is no horizontal acceleration. So I'm going to use this equation here, but a lot of this stuff is going to be zero. So for instance, x naught. At the moment I release the book, x naught is zero. Okay, it has a v naught of 40. I've given it that. So 40 times t plus one half. The acceleration in the x direction is zero t squared. Okay, now I'll clean it up in a second, but really all you've got there is a 40 t. In the y direction, uh, there is a y naught. It starts 100 meters off the ground. Because I'm releasing it horizontally, v naught is zero. It's, it's going horizontally at the beginning, not vertically. So I've got a zero t plus one half. And the acceleration in the vertical direction is down. And in my coordinate system, down has to be negative. So I've got minus 9.8 and then t squared. Now I'm just going to rewrite this, kind of clean it up a little bit. Okay, so in, in the i hat direction, I've just got a 40 t. That's the i hat. In the j hat direction, I've got a 100 minus 4.9 t squared j hat, and that's meters. Okay, so that is my position vector as a function of time. Now, I can also figure out my velocity vector as a function of time. There's a couple ways to do that. You could use equation 2, basically. You could use that in both the x and y direction. But uh, what I like to do is just take a derivative. This is dr dt. OK, so derivative of 40 T is just 40 I hat. OK, plus uh, the derivative of 100 is zero and the derivative of negative 4.9 T squared is negative 9.8 T J hat. And this would be meters per second. And then the acceleration as a function of time would be dV dt, oops, sorry, which would be the derivative of this again. The derivative of 40 is 0, and the derivative of negative 9.8t is negative 9.8. Now notice, and that's meters per second per second, notice that the acceleration is down and constant. Well, hello, it's, it's a projectile. That's what it's supposed to be, right? All right, now, uh, to figure out uh, what we want to know, how far does it go? Well, at the moment of impact, what do I know for sure? Well, I know that in the y direction, the height zero. So what I'm going to do is I am going to set the y component of r equal to zero. 
So 0 equals 100 minus 4.9 t squared. So uh, if I divide that out, t squared equals 20.4, and I get t equals about 4.52 seconds. Okay. Uh, so I had to figure out the time, and now I'm just going to plug this in to figure out what x is, Okay, what the, the horizontal component of displacement is at the moment of impact. So I'm just plugging in the 5.42 times 40, basically. So uh, delta x, or x, will be um, 40 times 4.52, which uh, I get approximately 181 meters. Now, by the way, I left my numbers in the calculator, so that's why it might not be exactly 181, um, but that's what I get. And then the velocity, all I got to do is take this time that I've calculated and plug it into my velocity vector. So my velocity at uh, 4.52 seconds is 40 i hat minus 9.8 times 4.52 j hat. And if I plug that in, I get 40 i hat minus uh, let's see, approximately 44.3 j hat meters per second. And if you wanted to, you could pythag that out. So you'd have a, there's your vx is 40. Here's your VY, 44.3. You could pythag those, get the magnitude of the velocity, and do an inverse tangent and get the angle of impact as well quite easily. All right, uh, the next video, I, I do a couple examples with uh, projectiles launched at angles. Um, I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.